Nolan, all right, let's move on. A landmark week for the city of Detroit. The city is no longer under state financial oversight almost five years ago after filing for bankruptcy. Also this week, some big news about a potential Ford campus in Corktown, plus new developments by the Illiches to go along with Little Caesars Arena and a waterfront aquarium from the Detroit <laughs> Zoo. All right, so let's start, though, with the significance of Detroit being out from under state oversight. This is a big deal. So no Justice Department oversight, yeah. um, no Housing Department oversight, right, and yeah. state financial review now stepping back. Detroit, you're on your own. Here's your second chance. Right. I mean, well, first of all, let's talk about the, the remarkable uh, set of circumstances that had to happen to create this. Three straight years of balanced budgets. They turned out to be three, th three straight years of surplus uh, budgets. Think back in time in Detroit. When was the last time we had one year of surplus budget? I mean, you talk about the difference uh, there over time. You know, one of the things that, that is disappointing when, this, when these kind of things happen is that we get caught back in the narrative that, uh, about the bankruptcy and whether it was necessary or good for the city. And, you know, a bunch of stuff gets loaded onto bankruptcy that was never part of the intent of bankruptcy. Bankruptcy was not going to fix uh, the, the tremendous social ills that we have in, in Detroit. The bankruptcy was not going to fix uh, the lack of opportunity that exists in so much of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Bankruptcy is a very simple process. It's about reorganizing your debt in a way that allows you to service it and take some of the money that you have and spend it on services. It did that tremendously. $7 billion swing in our debt picture. Uh, there is more money to hire more police officers, firefighters, uh, garbage pickup, those kind of things. It gives us the opportunity to get to these other things because the debt is not on our back. We're just at the beginning of that. It's too early to say, well, we haven't solved all these other problems. Yeah. Now we have the opportunity to focus on that. Because you have the resources to be able to do it. And, it, and, and I think it, when, you, mm -hmm. when you look at it, do other cities or other municipalities in the country say, wow, Detroit did it right, or they did it the right I'm way? I'm surprised that more municipalities haven't followed the path. Because remember, Detroit was the, the first and largest municipality to go in bankruptcy. And the fear was it was going to trigger a wave of such bankruptcies around the country. But if you look at this, Detroit Detroit now has a, a basically debt-free city or a much, much reduced, much reduced debt-free yeah. city. And in the school district, the debt was wiped away. The challenge now Some for both yeah. um, the city and the school district is to be very, very careful with a credit card. Uh, you know, they don't want to start borrowing again. Yeah. Uh, you've got to live within the but means. The other, I think the city's doing that. But the other s signal is to the state in particular about its investment in mm -hmm. cities like Detroit, which has been abysmal for the last 20 years, uh, really awful, and wasn't great before that. I mean, cities around the, the cities around the still, right, all over, all over Michigan, there are still really tremendous uh, gaps in terms of uh, the things that we need uh, here in the city of Detroit and the money that we have to provide them. Uh, bankruptcy put us in a position where we have, uh, we got the debt off our backs, but it doesn't necessarily solve that problem uh, of revenue. And I, I continue to believe that we need to revisit the whole idea of the way we provide revenue for cities, both from the tax side of things, uh, which nobody wants to talk about, and from the revenue sharing side of things, you know, what what taxes are collected at the state level that need to be returned to cities. But coming, state but coming out of oversight this week, let me interrupt, Nolan, mm -hmm. um, does this signal to businesses either, either in Michigan or outside of Michigan saying Detroit is the place to invest now and you have all these announcements this week of more building coming We've in the villages that, right? and everything. We've been yeah. seeing that. I mean, it, if, if, you, if you look across the landscape of Detroit, it's remarkable about what's happening. There's new places, new things going into the ground, different things. You actually have factories now going into the ground. It's not all bars, restaurants, and what do you, What do you make of Ford thinking of moving a campus down I, to Corktown? You know, I think that is, is a huge thing, not just for Corktown, for the whole city. And to Steve's earlier point in terms of revenue, I don't think you can count on the state revenue solving Detroit's problems. But there is a lot of opportunity to grow Detroit's own tax base. And if this development grows Detroit's tax base, you get more workers in here paying uh, income taxes, more property taxes. 
I think well, that's like where, the pro where the resources for solving well, the problem has got to come from. Some yeah. of the problem on it's the development side is, is that uh, we give away the tax revenue mm -hmm. on, the, on the development side. Look at the stadiums, right? We collect almost nothing uh, in taxes from these huge investments but that we we've do made from the people who of tax there. dollars. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got to rethink the way we fund cities uh, in a big picture way in this, in this, uh, in this state, and, and Detroit will not be able to fix its problems until until we do that. Well, I'm going to be interested to see some of the news coming out of the uh, the Ford uh, shareholders meetings mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks of what's yeah. going to be happening down in Corktown. That'll be really good. All right.